Now you can play world's greatest investigator with J.J. Arms, the action figure with interchangeable hands. How did a private investigator with two missing arms who owned a private zoo and helped find Marlon Brando's kidnapped son get his own action figure in the 70s? Well, let's take a look at the incredible true story of the man behind the action figure, J.J. Arms. <laughs> Enough of its jungle. It's Indiana Jones, a large size action figure. Most action figures are based on popular movies and TV characters. And a few times celebrities themselves become action figures or toy dolls. But it's kind of rare to see a somewhat unknown get his own action figure line. But in 1976, an action figure of the world's greatest investigator, J.J. Arms, would get his own action figure thanks to toy company Ideal. For many kids, when we saw this action figure at the store, we thought it was just some cheap gimmick from a toy company trying to rip off James Bond mixed with a little $6 million man. Could this have really been based on a real person? A private investigator missing both his arms and his last name was Arms? It was just too much to believe. It sounds more like a toy pitch meeting than a real person. But it's true, the J.J. Arms action figure was based on a real guy. A really cool guy at that. Over the years, television and movie audiences have been flooded with imitations of James Bond. In my opinion, the person who comes closest in real life is private investigator Jay Arms. And his achievement is even more impressive because Jay Arms has established himself as a world-famous detective despite the fact that he lost his hands in a freak accident at the age of 12. The Action Pack action figure by Ideal was based on American private investigator J.J. Arms whose real name was Julian Armas. Jay was born in 1932 in a small town close to El Paso, Texas. El Paso City, by the Rio Grande. Jay grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, and he had to fight for almost anything he earned. At the age of 11, he befriended Dick Cables, who was seven years older than him. The two hitched a plan to break into a railroad supply house to steal railroad torpedoes. These were small, exploding packs to alert the train of an upcoming stop. Just playing around with the railroad torpedo pack, Jay rubbed them together, and it blew up in his hands. Luckily, his friend Dick, who was standing next to him, wasn't harmed. However, Jay was taken to the nearby El Paso hospital, where both of his hands had to be removed two inches below his wrist. I opened it and had a lead sealed on it. He asked me to take it off which I did when I took the uh, lead sealed off, it exploded, and can completely blew me from the point of impact about 20 feet away. I landed by this uh, tree, and I remember very well, I was attempting to get up, you know, by trying to grasp the tree, and I looked at my hands and they were all gone. They were 20 shreds. Jay didn't let that get the best of him. After a four week stay at the hospital, Jay was back in school and was signed up to play local sports and learn how to shoot in a local gun club. He graduated from high school at the age of 15 and headed to NYC to get his degree in psychology. In 1956, Jay found himself back in El Paso as the operating director of Goodwill. But two years later, he would team up with James Chu to open their own private investigating business. In the early 60s, he would have his own private zoo in North Loop where he would raise German Shepherds, chimpanzees, a cheetah, a cougar, a taipir, and several monkeys. But it was his private eye job that got him his first taste of fame, when he was hired to find Marlon Brando's kidnapped son. In 1972, Marlon Brando's son, Christian, was kidnapped by his mother, who promised to pay a group of Mexican hippies to help hide Christian from his father. However, she never kept her promise of paying the group, so they kidnapped him from his mother. Jay was on the case, but it didn't take him long to rescue him from the group of hippies after finding out they were living in a tent. I came across, I came across their camp. It was eight uh, hippie uh, individuals that had uh, made up a camp there, you know. So I ran in there in the first tent, you know. I said, everybody out, you know. And sure enough, uh, there was a guy came out naked, you know. And I lined him up against the walls of the ocean there. And I said, don't move. And I ran into another tent, you know, and uh, then I found the tent there that contained Christian Brando. Was he actually a prisoner? 
uh, he was held against his will. This would not only get him a little taste of fame, he would get paid $25,000 plus expenses for solving the case. And in 1975, he found himself on the hot list. That was People Magazine's most 25 most intriguing people of the year. I'm reading the most fascinating article on the most fascinating people of the year. And in 1976, Jay would decide to write his own autobiography called J.J. Arms Investigator. In this book, he claims he was part of a jailbreak that would later be made into a 1975 movie called Breakout, but that could never be confirmed. He also said that between 1949 and 1955, he had a contract to work for 20th Century Fox, where he appeared in 39 movies and 28 TV shows. However, the only thing that can be confirmed was his appearance in a 1973 episode of Hawaii Five-O. After releasing the book, Jay met with Ideal Toys to turn himself into an action figure. But not just an action figure, but a role model for kids. The two wouldn't just launch a toy line. They would team up for an investigating course for schools throughout the U.S. For the Ideal Toy Line, two toys would be released. The action figure of J.J. Arms would come with exchangeable hands. The other in the line was a playset vehicle called Mobile Investigating Unit. This was a mobile vehicle that came supplied with anything a good investigator would need. A playset base camp was also planned but never released. The line sold modest for Ideal, but after 1976 they decided to move on. But Jay would keep teaching kids about investigating and how to stay safe. In 1989, he would be rewarded the most successful investigator in the country by the International Society of Private Investigators. Today, Jay is 89 years old, but in 2002, he told KSTM News that he was not retired and his mind was as sharp as it was 50 years ago, and he could still solve any case given to him. Also, in 2020, Jay would sell his estate for $3 million, saying it was just too big for him, as his kids had grown up and moved out, and it was just him and his wife there. He also was selling off a lot of personal items, but he wanted people to know it wasn't because he was broke and needed the money. It was just that he didn't need 122 suits anymore and the other stuff. He said he could live any place he wanted, any place in the world, and he was happy to be living in El Paso, Texas. El Paso City Well, that's a look at a young boy who lost his arms, became a highly successful private investigator, found Marlon Brando's son, opened his own zoo, got his own action figure, and maybe best of all, had his own mobile investigating van. Even Steve Austin can't say that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thumb up and like my content, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk again soon. JJ Arms comes with everything you see from Ideal. Hey, Jumpman <laughs> Channel popping, though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.